Good morning. I'm Sally Weaver. I want to welcome you all to this worship service of the beloved community that is Emmanuel Episcopal Church in Webster Groves. Just a quick reminder, announcements uh, will be in the middle of the service immediately following the exchange of the peace. And this is Lent, so we have introduced more silence into our service. Let us be in worship. forgives all our sins. His mercy endures forever. Since we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us with confidence draw near the throne of grace, that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen.
Lord be with you. And also with you, let us pray. Gracious Father, whose blessed Son, Jesus Christ, came down from heaven to be the true bread, which gives life to the world. Evermore give us this bread, that he may live in us, and we in him, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Numbers. For Mount Hor, the Israelites set out by the way to the Red Sea to go around the land of Edom. The people became impatient on the way. The people spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us up and out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no food and no water. We just detest this miserable food. Then the Lord and Moses, then the Lord Moses sent poisonous serpents among the people. They bit the people so that many Israelites died. The people came and came to Moses and said, We have sinned by speaking against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord to take away the serpents from us. So Moses prayed for the people. The Lord said to Moses, Make a poisonous serpent and set it on a pole. Pole. So, and everyone who has been shall look at it and live. So Moses made a serpent of bronze, put upon a pole, and whenever a serpent bit someone, that person would look at the serpent of bronze and live. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy endures forever. Let all those whom the Lord has redeemed proclaim that he redeemed them from the hand of the foe. He gathered them out of the lands, from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. Some were fools and took to rebellious ways. They were afflicted because of their sins. They abhorred all manner of food and drew near to death's door. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them from their distress. He sent forth his word and healed them and saved them from the grave. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his mercy and the wonders he does for his children. Let them offer a sacrifice of thanksgiving and tell of his acts with shouts of joy. A reading from Ephesians. You were dead through the trespasses and sins in which you once lived, following the course of this world, following the ruler of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work among those who are disobedient. All of us once lived among them in passions of our flesh, following the desires of flesh and senses, and we were by nature children of wrath like everyone else. But God, who is rich in mercy, out of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead through our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved, and raised us up with him, and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the ages to come he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace and kindness toward us in Jesus Christ. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not the result of works, so that no one may boast. For we are what he has made us, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand to be our way of life. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Oh, Lord. 
Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, Just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Those who believe in him are not condemned, but those who do not believe are condemned already, because they have not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment that the light has come into the world and people love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For all who do evil hate the light and do not come to the light so that their deeds may not be exposed. But those who do what is true come to the light so that it may clearly be seen that their deeds have been done in God. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. A woman wanted to paint a house. So she called a person who could paint the house. And she said to him, I'm going out of town, but I want you to paint this uh, house, uh, the, the color that I am very particular about it. So the man said, okay, wh what color do you want? So she picked up her uh, ashtray. She picked up her ashtray and uh, told him, that I need this house to be painted um, the same color. I want the exact color of this ashtray to be painted on the um, house. And she left. And this man was trying to find uh, that color. He was trying to mix various uh, colors and try to get the match of the ashtray. He tried and tried, it didn't work. Finally, he made up something and did it. When the woman came back, she was so surprised to see the house was painted the, the same color of the ashtray, very perfect match. She was so happy about it. But the, some of the friends of that painter who did the painting were aware that this man was struggling to find that exact match. He was struggling to get the same color. So they asked him, how did you manage? We know that you were trying hard and trying to find it, but uh, you, 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 were, you were really uh, going for it. But uh, finally you made it, how did you do it? So you said, I tried everything I could to find the same match, you know, the same ashtray color for the wall, nothing worked. Finally, what I did is I painted the house and I also painted the ashtray. That's what he said. So I could match both. You know, why I'm saying this is 
Christian living as Christians, sometimes we try to match with the world, try to do everything, you know, what the world is prescribing to us as a, a standard of our uh, standard or the quality of our life. They determine what life we need to lead on. What is that life that we got to um, um, follow? So what happens is that we try to match with the world. In today's uh, context, today's um, uh, the Bible reading that we had, the gospel reading, we see Nicodemus coming and having a very private, uh, very personal, private, and a political conversation with uh, Jesus Christ. So his conversation, he comes in the night and he talks to Jesus. He is a Pharisee, he is a leader of uh, Jews, and he wanted to have, he heard about Jesus, what Jesus is doing something different, something that uh, uh, people got to do. So he comes and uh, he wants to have a very private, but his questions and his uh, conversation is very much political also. So when we look at this conversation, you know, this gospel reading, um, today we had uh, from 14 to 21, but if you look at the whole uh, uh, pericope, the passage one to 21, we see this conversation happening. In this conversation, we could uh, 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 bring out so many things, um, um, you know, when we look at it, we could uh, uh, find uh, that the conversation is about earthly and eschatological. And we could find the faith and science, salvation and judgment, life and death, darkness, light, belief, and unbelief. So, so many things that we could pick from this passage and we could uh, uh, try to understand and reflect upon. But when you look at the whole passage or the focus of John's writing and his focus on, focus on presenting God comes down to love, comes down to God's love, for, for God so loved the world. You know, um, in the Old Testament, we see the Old Testament reading and which matches here, even here it says, you know, the 14, verse 14, Moses took the serpent in his hand. So what it projects is that in the Old Testament, there was a fear of God. There was a fear in them. They were trembling, whatever was happening at that point of time. But here, the Son of Man will be lifted up, but in love. You can, uh, you know, uh, identify uh, with that love. There may be so many differences between Christianity and other religion. But one thing, a person come from a very multi-pluralistic context would say that God came in search of us, you know, God who came in search of us. We don't have to go and search for God. In other religions, you find people try to find where God go to mountains, go to different places. But here is a God who came in search of us for that reason is God so loved us. Whenever I speak about love, I remember about my dog, you know, I had a dog in my, uh, when I was in India. Here it's difficult to have a dog. Uh, we know what are the legal issues and other things. So we don't want to risk, to risk until we are prepared to have a dog. But in India, we never lived without a dog. I had a Labrador and he was there for 11 years. I don't think any vestry committee I conducted without his presence. He just dodges in. And he comes because my house was inside the uh, church. When I was coming to US, uh, we didn't know all all family was coming to US, and I was thinking what to do with my dog. He is like my first son. Actually, I gifted that to my wife when she was uh, pregnant. So um, that 
you know, when I was planning to come to US and we were wondering what to do, just a month before he died. We tried everything to uh, save him, but he died. So when I think of that, um, you know, love, yes, my dad, my mom, uh, my friends, uh, so many things come to my mind, but something that comes from my heart, I think of the love that he showed, the protection that he gave, the assurance that I had uh, that he can protect my family. So something that comes, but we need to understand all of us have such kind of love in our lives to something. Uh, we may have that, but here we are focusing on God's love, God's love. So I wanted to just very quickly tell three things. One is uh, God so loved the world. So to understand the nature of God, we need to understand his creation. How we relate ourselves with the creation is very important. God created us out of love. God has inimitably created us so that we could reflect this image. So when we uh, relate with the nature, the things around, holistically, when we think about the nature, and when we identify with the nature, with the creation of this whole world, then we will know the nature of our God because God did not just love you and me, but he loved the whole world for God so loved the world. So the second thing that I would say is uh, the Christ, the manifestation of God's love. And where do we find that God's love? How do we experience that love? Where do we see that? That's what John is very much focusing on. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. He gave his only son, one and only son. Monogenes in the Greek word, it very specifically used there. It is not to claim uh, that you know um, he comes from somewhere, but rather he is unique but still he is son of God. So here we see, when we see Christ, when we understand Jesus, then we could understand that manifestation of God's love than anything else. We may have the experience of so many things, you know, we always focus on our own doing whether it is baptism, whether it is Eucharist, whether whatever we do, unless we understand God's love, uh, the manifestation of Jesus Christ, we are not going to fully uh, embrace that love. And the third thing that I wanted to say is the fulfillment of God's love in the experience of salvation or liberation or the mission that I would say I would go with Bishop Templeton who says uh, the experience of salvation is, is, it is a continuous aspect. Salvation begins and it doesn't end. We keep moving on. We keep saved. We keep uh, saved by uh, God. So our, our doing, our experience of salvation, our experience of liberation happens or gives uh, that assurance of fulfillment of God's love. So we get that uh, um, liberation uh, in our life. I would definitely say I got converted to Christianity because I wanted to be liberated from the um, um, oppressive structure. So that is what main, um, most of the uh, Christians you would find the experience of salvation in Jesus Christ. That's what Ephesians says. You know, as we experience that salvation, we continue to share that. That's what in the um, Eucharist we say, this is for you and for many. Ephesians says we are made in Christ, uh, um, you know, that doing. God has already put in us so that we may continue to share that love with one another. In today's context, um, the church, you know, as Christians, we try to box ourselves. Christianity or Christian living is 
being nice to others. We box ourselves or make everybody, and nobody is poor. That's our goal. We box ourselves. And also we protocol our mission, whom to do, where to do, how to do. It has been boxed. I cannot go beyond that. But God's love is for everybody. We need to go out and do it. God's love has to be manifested in Jesus Christ. You see all the missionaries who came to different countries who shared the liberation, who shared the word of God and made people to liberate. They came with the message of Jesus. I just want to conclude with uh, one thing and um, um, uh, some of the words that I'm going to use may be uh, not so comfortable, but still, uh, I hope you will excuse me. This is one of the experience that uh, uh, Tony uh, Campolo had. Um, he is an American sociologist and a preacher. Uh, he once went to Hawaii uh, to uh, give a lecture or somewhere, and um, it was uh, got delayed in the night, so he didn't take the dinner, and he went back. He went to sleep, but he couldn't sleep. He got up about three o'clock in the morning, two thirty or something, three. And he was trying to find a place where he can just have something. And he went around and finally he ended up, there was only one place available. It was so different, weird, that place he went. And all that he could get is just a donut and a coffee. He thought, okay, this place doesn't look good. Uh, it's time that uh, he has to leave. Then he saw so many uh, prostitutes coming inside the um, that uh, restaurant, that small coffee shop. And he was so embarrassed and he wanted to leave immediately. He was finding time to get out of that place. As he was trying to get out, he heard the, some of the women who came there were talking. He heard one lady was telling, tomorrow is my birthday. And a friend was, um, you know, sarcastically saying, um, uh, what do you want me to do? You want me to throw a party for you or you need a gift or something? So this woman said, no, I never had um, birthday parties in my life. I never had that experience. Don't try to pull me. And this conversation was happening and he didn't want to leave. And those girls left and he asked the man who was there uh, who was serving him food and he asked, who is that woman? And he said, her name is Agnes. And he said, tomorrow is her birthday. Will she come tomorrow also the same time? He said, every day she's here at three o'clock. He said, why don't we throw a party for that? And they planned. He said, okay, I will decorate the place and we'll have some cakes baked. And they planned it. So exactly the next day he was there and everything was ready. And Agnes came to that place at three o'clock exactly. And she was surprised to see the whole place was decorated and the uh, cake was there and uh, she understood it is for her. And uh, uh, tearfully, she cut the cake. And before giving to others, she said, I never had to cut a clay cake in my life. I never had the party like this. Can I take the cake home? My home is just a um, um, few um, uh, meters away. Can I take the cake? And they said, you can take the cake. And she left. And uh, Tony Campello and everybody were just looking at her going outside, going out of that uh, coffee shop. At that moment, Tony Campello said, why don't we just pray for Agnes? And he got onto the chair and he prayed for everybody, especially for Agnes. So the man next to uh, him who baked the cake, the man said, oh, I didn't know that you are a preacher. I didn't know that you are a pastor. Which church you belong to? And he said, I belong to a church where they throw party in the night for prostitutes. I go to a church where they throw parties in the night, three o'clock for prostitutes. And he said, if there is a church, I will join in that church. Church needs to be challenged. Last week, Jesus cleansed the temple. Like that, we need to allow Jesus to cleanse ourselves. We have built on so many things. 
we don't have to be just nice we have to work for everybody it should be all right we need to continue to do the mission but we need to understand that god's love is for everybody out in the world father son and the holy spirit amen we believe in one god the father the almighty maker of heaven and earth of all that is seen and unseen we believe in one lord jesus christ the only son of god eternally begotten of the father god from god light from light true god from true god begotten not made of one being with the father through him all things were made for us and for our salvation he came down from heaven by the power of the holy spirit he became incarnate from the virgin mary and was made man for our sake he was crucified under pontius pilate he suffered death and was buried on the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the father he will come again in glory to judge living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end we believe in the holy spirit the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. With all our heart and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the world, for the welfare of the Holy Church of God, and for the unity of all peoples, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our bishops and for all the clergy and people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our president, for the leaders of the nations, and for all in authority, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this city, for every city and community, and for those who live in them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the good earth which God has given us, and for the wisdom and will to conserve it. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the aged and infirm, for the widowed and orphans, and for the sick and the suffering, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For Catherine Ziegler, Bob Funk, Bob Hewlett, Mark Mitchell, Kenneth Barino, Peg Cooper, Nancy Richardson, Virginia Benson, Mary Roberts, Sandy Baker, and those we now name in our hearts, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the poor and the oppressed, for the unemployed and the destitute, for prisoners and captives, and for all who remember and care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who have died in the hope of resurrection, Sandy McGuigan, Harlan Johnson, Fred Call, David Erickson, those we remember in our own hearts, and for all the departed, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For deliverance from all danger, violence, oppression, and degradation, let us pray to the Lord. 
Lord, have mercy. That we may end our lives in faith and hope without suffering and without reproach. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. In the communion of saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life to Christ our God. To you, O Lord our God. Almighty God, to whom our needs are known before we ask, help us to ask only what accords with your will and those good things which we dare not or in our blindness cannot ask. Grant us for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Also with you. Peace, everybody. Peace, of the Lord, everybody. Peace, peace, everybody. Peace, everyone. Peace, everyone. Peace, everyone. Peace, everyone. Peace, everyone. Peace, everyone. Good morning. Uh, just a couple announcements. Um, after service, we'll take just a five minute break. You can grab a cup of coffee. And then the children are going to tell us what they are grateful for. So you do not want to miss that. Once the children are done with their gratitude, uh, we will begin part three of our uh, Love Transformed uh, series. And this week it is learn. Uh, next Sunday, a week from today at two o'clock in the afternoon, uh, the Bishop is holding a, a, a conversation about race, which is being moderated by uh, transitional Deacon Shug Goodlow and our own Mimi Ship has been interviewed for that. So you don't wanna miss that. Uh, also a week from today, is the deadline for talking to Jay. If you are interested in recording yourself singing, Jesus Christ is risen today so that uh, Jay can compile those offerings for Easter Sunday into a virtual choir. So talk to Jay about that if you would like to participate in that. On March 27th, <clears throat> that's the deadline. If you would like to uh, remember people either in as a memorial or in Thanksgiving toward lilies or music for Easter. So the deadline for that is March 27th. And I believe uh, that that's it for me. Thank you. Um, now we are going to pray for all those who are, um, um, you know, celebrating the birthdays and the anniversaries. So um, I will uh, 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 read out the names uh, on the chat. Megan Lawless is celebrating birthday on Tuesday. Um, Andrew is having challenges, prayer, yes. Um, then um, Samantha Enlund is, uh, becomes a teenage on a Saturday. Very good, have wonderful. Um, then we have um, um, Frank McKen, Sandy died. Yes, we remember um, in our prayers. Kirk, Kiki's birthday, Thursday. Then uh, Sarah's birthday. 
Claire Martin, 12th birthday this week. Molly Wilson is celebrating her birthday. Okay, I don't see um, any other names. So happy birthday to everyone. And also the, uh, the, we will remember uh, for uh, uh, the people you mentioned on the chat, we will uh, remember them in our prayers, definitely. Let us pray. Watch over your children, O Lord, as the days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall. And in their hearts may your peace, which surpasses understanding, abide all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Now it's time for offertory as um, um, we keep, um, um, you know, uh, encouraging you. You have different ways to offer, uh, make your offering and um, uh, whatever is convenient to you, um, we welcome you to do so. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Hide it under a bushel. No, I'm gonna let it shine. Hide it under a bushel. No, I'm gonna let it shine. Hide it under a bushel. No, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Don't let Satan <gasps> it out. I'm gonna let it shine. Don't let Satan it out. I'm gonna let it shine. Don't let Satan it out. I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. All around the neighborhood, I'm gonna let it shine. All around the neighborhood, I'm gonna let it shine. All around the neighborhood, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. God, giver of every good gift, lead us to share as we have received, abundantly and joyfully. Bless our gifts for the mission and ministry of Emmanuel Church. Nourish us, your people, to proclaim the reconciling work of God 
in Christ. Amen. Now let us prepare ourselves in our heart, mind, and in spirit to participate in the rite of spiritual communion. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. I invite all who cannot receive Holy Communion this day, but who long for the grace and blessing of God through our Savior Jesus Christ, to join me in these prayers. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. In union, O Lord, with your faithful people at every altar of your church, where the Holy Eucharist is celebrated, we desire to offer to you our praise and thanksgiving. We remember your death. Lord Christ, we proclaim your resurrection. We await your coming in glory. Since we cannot receive you today in the sacrament of your body and blood, we pray that you come spiritually into our hearts. Strengthen us with your grace, Lord Jesus, and let us never be separated from you. May we live in you and you in us in this life and in the life to come. Amen. Look down in mercy, O Lord, on our people who are before you, and grant that those whom have nourished your word by bring forth fruit worthy of repentance through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you all, and we will be back in five minutes with the children.